This is another video where I just talk, tell some random story in Spanish, and then I put the subtitles in English and Spanish so it's easy to follow along with absolutely everything that I say. And after the story, I do a breakdown of some of the vocabulary that I think is most useful to go over and things that you need to make sure that you have in your Spanish bank in the back of your head that you can use to sound more like a native speaker and to get more fluent in Spanish. Like the video if you enjoy this content and want to see more like it and subscribe, of course. So I'm going to start talking in Spanish. I want to go ahead and give a disclaimer. This is not a true story. I made this story up. I just think it has some good vocabulary in it. I've got it written down over here, by the way. So that's why I'm going to be looking over here. Bueno, la semana pasada yo estaba en un café muy tranquilo. Estaba tomando mi café, trabajando, editando algunos videos. Cuando de repente escuché un ruido súper fuerte. Yo miro hacia la puerta, hacia la entrada del café y un perdito entra corriendo como si estuviera en una cartera. No lo podía creer. Los trabajadores del café tampoco sabían qué hacer en ese momento. El perdito era un chihuahua chiquitico y empezó a correr entre las mesas, saltando de aquí para allá. La gente estaba mirando, obviamente, sorprendida, pero también todo el mundo se estaba riendo. Bueno, al algunos no. Varias personas trataron de agarrarlo, pero sin éxito. Después de un rato, entra un señor, obviamente todo estresado, gritando, ¡Se me escapó el perro! ¡Perdón, perdón! Y todo el mundo se empezó a reír, por supuesto. Y al final logramos a atrapar al perdito y devolvérselo. El señor estaba muy agradecido con nosotros y dijo que más nunca dejaría que saliera por la puerta sin cordega. Fue un momento súper divertido. Fue algo muy loco, pero gracioso al mismo tiempo. All right, so let's break down some of the vocabulary here. I thought it was a decent story. Obviously not true, but anyways. Uh, last week, la semana pasada. Obviously, that's good to know. Um, literally, word for word, the week passed. Um, estaba en un café. So a lot of people ask me the difference between estaba and estuvo to say was when using the verb estar. Remember that estuvo for preterite and estaba is for imperfect. My rule is, when in doubt, use the imperfect unless you're sure that it's preterite. And how do you know that it's preterite? It was a completed action. So in this case, I could have said estuve en un café. I could have said estaba en un café. It really doesn't matter. Just the context might slightly be different depending on which one I decide to use. Estuve would imply that, hey, I was there and I'm no longer there anymore. I was there for a specific amount of time and it's over with, which is technically true it's okay to say but a lot of times when we're just describing something and telling a story we'll use estaba just to say hey i was in the cafe like that's not the point of you know i'm not talking about me leaving the cafe necessarily it's just hey i was there and that's it so yeah the, another great word for you to know is de repente this means all of a sudden or out of nowhere uh, make sure that that's that's a really good one to practice if you're telling stories that's also my challenge for you today highly challenge you to try to make up your own story using some of these vocabulary that's a great way to work on your past tense skills and keep on telling your story over and over again write it down if you need to until you can just fluently say it that's the thing that a lot of people get wrong when they practice spanish is that they just say something, they write it down, and then that's it. They think that they're done and over with it. You have to keep on saying what you're practicing until you no longer have to translate it, where it's just you associate the meaning of what you're saying with the word, if that makes sense. So you've got to get it to where it becomes natural. No lo podía creer. I couldn't believe it. It's good to have that ready to go. It's a good phrase. And think about how you can take these phrases and interchange the verbs. So instead of saying, hey, I couldn't believe it, I could have said, I couldn't see it. No lo podía ver. Or no lo podía... Whatever. So think about how you can always take these phrases and just change some of the verbs and some of the vocabulary words to make them yours. So the difference between saying perdo and perdito is whenever you take like a, a a noun and add that ito at the end it just makes it sound smaller so it's like a small dog you know perdo is just a dog and then perdito would be like a smaller dog chiquito is just a fun way to say you know a tiny little dog that's why if you have like the word niño and you say niñito Adding that ito at the end, it just makes it sound smaller and cuter. You're going to notice this a lot with native speakers and, and Spanish in general. The way that you can kind of add that to the end of a lot of words and to describe people and things. And 
it's one of the things that makes Spanish such a cool language and a very expressive language as well. De aquí para allá. So, el perro estaba saltando de aquí para allá. So, it's just saying the dog was jumping from here to there. Knowing de aquí para allá is just a common phrase. And, and it's good to know these types of phrases so that when someone's telling a story and talking to you, uh, you, you can just immediately associate that meaning because you've heard it before a bunch of times instead of having to translate from here to there. You know, you just hear the aquí para allá and you immediately know what it's talking about. And and that's a cool point too is when I say para allá, a lot of people, most people will just say para allá. Uh, they won't say the para. It's just pa. That that's one of the times in Spanish where you'll just cut off that uh that word. Agardar to grab, good good verb to know. Like if I just say, "Hey, grab my phone." It's agarra mi teléfono. Se me escapó. There's a lot of verbs where if you want to say the dog escaped or I forgot or it occurred to me, here's a list of some of these where you can say se me perdió, I lost something, se me escapó, something escaped from me, se me ocurrió, something occurred to me, se me olvidó as I forgot something. It's almost like you're literally saying this thing slipped my mind or the dog escaped and it wasn't my fault. It's like you're taking the blame from you to putting it on something else. If I say se me perdió, it's like I'm saying this thing lost itself to me. It's not like it's my fault. I didn't lose it. This thing just got lost. So it's, it's kind of funny how there's a lot of phrases that follow that se me something format. Um, so you can look up a lot of those and you'll notice native speakers use them a lot as well. Uh, don't try to translate it word for word necessarily. Just learn how to use those phrases. It's just se me followed by a verb conjugated in the third person, essentially, in the in the past tense. So yeah, that, that's really the main vocabulary that I saw uh, from this story. Uh, if you noticed anything and have any questions, let me know in the comments. Uh, I'd like to also invite you to my free training on how to become fluent in Spanish within a year. I show you what to focus on and not to focus focus on and the three strategies that allowed me to become fluent in Spanish within a year and be having real conversations with native speakers after just a couple months from starting to learn Spanish. I show you how you can do the same. Click on the link in the description below and you can sign up for this free training right now and check it out. Hope to see you there. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Ciao.